Welcome, today I created a new project around the Spring Authorization Server. In this video we will configure a custom password grant type, according to the latest version of Spring Boot 3.1.5. We start with the result, and test the code with Insomnia. The new project can handle four different authorization grant types. Grant type authorization code. Grant type refresh token. Grant type client credentials. Grant type custom password. We start by testing the client credentials grant type. Make a POST request to HTTP localhost port 9000 OAuth 2 token. With basic authentication. Username, client. And password, secret. In the query tab we have grant type client credentials. When we click send we receive an access token. We can copy this access token to test the code with the Spring resource server. Make a GET request to localhost port 8091, resource server 01. With a bearer authentication. Copy the access token into token and the prefix is bearer. The result is spring resource server 01, client. You will see in the next tests that the username will change. With grant type client credentials, the username is the client ID. The second test is grant type, authorization code. In the authentication tab you do an OAuth2. Grant type authorization code. Authorization URL. HTTP. Localhost 9000 OAuth2 authorize. Access token URL. HTTP localhost 9000 OAuth2 token. Client ID, client. Client secret. Secret. Use PKCE. Code challenge method. SHA-256. Redirect URL. HTTP 127.0.0.18080 login OAuth2. Scopes. Open ID and profile. Now click on Fetch Tokens to log in with your username and password. In this test we log in with the user username. We get three tokens. A refresh token. ID token. And an access token. We copy the access token to test the resource server. Make another GET request to localhost port 8091 resource server 01. With a bearer authentication. Copy the access token into token and the prefix is bearer. The result is spring resource server 01 with username user. The third test is our custom password grant type. Make a POST request to HTTP localhost port 9000 OAuth2 token. With basic authentication. Username, client. And password, secret. In the query tab we have. Grant type. Custom password. Username. Admin. Password. Password. Scope. Open ID, profile. The comma, is important here. When we click send we get an access token. A refresh token. And an ID token. We can now copy the access token to test the resource server. Make another GET request to localhost port 8091 resource server 01. With a bearer authentication. Copy the access token into token and the prefix is bearer. The result is Spring Resource Server 01 with username admin. 
The final test is the refresh token. Copy the refresh token from the previous test and return a POST request to HTTP localhost port 9000 OAuth 2 token. With basic authentication. Username, client. And password, secret. In the query tab we have. Grant type. Refresh token. And refresh token. Copy the refresh token here and click send and we will get two new tokens. A refresh token. And an access token. We can now move on to the code in Eclipse. We start with the code of the Spring Resource Server. In the POM XML file we have Spring Boot Starter version 3.1.5 Java version 21 And the dependencies Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 Resource Server And Spring Boot Starter Web In application YAML do we have server port 8091? The application name. And the authorization server address. In the security config class we have a simple configuration for a resource server. And finally a get request that returns spring resource server 01 with the username. The second and largest block of code is the spring authorization server. In the POM XML file we have Spring Boot Starter 3.1.5 Java 21 and the Spring Boot Starter OAuth 2 authorization server dependency. The main class is a standard Spring Boot main class. In application YAML we only have server port 9000. The real work starts with the security config class. We started configuring with code from the spring.io website. In the first security filter chain bean. We configure the token endpoint. With an access token converter with the custom code grant authentication converter. And the authentication provider custom code grant authentication provider. We create OAuth2 authorization service. Token generator. In memory user details manager. And the password encoder available. We also have the password encoder bean. And the in memory user details manager bean with two users. User. And admin. Registered client repository bean. In addition to the standard configuration, we have the custom password grant type. All these data must match in the tests with Insomnia. JWK Source Bean. Here the keys are created with Generate RSA key. JWT Decoder Bean. Authorization Server Settings Bean. OAuth2 Authorization Service Bean. We will soon need the Token Generator Bean in the Custom Code Grant Authentication Provider to create the tokens. And finally the token customizer bean. Custom password code grant starts with the custom code grant authentication converter. And implements authentication converter. First we check whether the grant type is the same as custom password. And all parameters are read out. If everything is correct, we will return a new custom code grant authentication token with all parameters. The custom code grant authentication token extends OAuth2 authorization grant authentication token, here we read the username, password, and scopes. The last and most extensive class is custom code grant authentication provider and implements authentication provider. We make authorization service token generator user details service Password encoder. With constructor injection available. We start with the supports method, here we check whether the request is of the type custom code grant authentication token. If yes, we start the authenticate method. 
First we retrieve some parameters and check if everything is correct. If there is an error we throw an exception. Then we create a username password authentication token. And default OAuth2 token context. Then we can start creating an access token. If necessary, a refresh token. And finally the ID token. We save everything in the authorization service. And return a new OAuth2 access token authentication token with all tokens. The last block are a few private methods that we need to create the tokens. These are all taken from the Spring Authorization Server code. So that's it for this video. Thank you for following us and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. All comments are welcome and will be answered as soon as possible. Thank you.